my mouth. I have no control. Happy Friday. So if there's anything we learned from COVID, it's that our leaders and experts lie and they suck. That's it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> First, a leader, so-called leader, VP Kamala Harris, or as Joe calls her, President Harris. As she attempts to string some words together like cheap, half-blinking Christmas lights, and she's the dimmest bulb. Six former administration officials last week wrote that open letter urging the administration to change course, to change strategy. Is it time? It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. <laughs> every day it is time for us to agree mm. that there are things and tools that are available to us to slow this thing down. Mm. That time is every day. <laughs> wow. It's like a song lyric. That's not word salad. That's a turd salad with a vinaigrette of voter regret. She just starts talking, hoping the words line up like kids at the school cafeteria, but instead they scatter like a deck of cards in a strong wind. Two metaphors tied together. <laughs> It's funny, the Dems were hoping her youthful enthusiasm would rub off on Biden, which is hard to do because they've only been in the same room twice in the last year. But instead, Biden's incoherence has rubbed off on her. Apparently, it's as contagious as Omicron. Here's a comparison. Count the vote. Count the vote. Count the vote. I urge people to, you can Google it or go onto any search engine and find out where free testing and the free testing site is available. And to help uh, lead our federal testing program, I've talked, I've, 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 I've excuse me, I've tapped uh, Dr. Tom, Eng I'm, I hope I pronounce it, Eng 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 Engel Englesby. Correct. I have to look at the current information. I think it's going to be by next week, but soon, absolutely soon. And it is a matter of urgency for us. Should we have done that sooner? We are doing it. But should we have done it sooner? We are doing it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like she caught a new variant. Call it Jomicron. It rots the brains of mediocre politicians. No wonder they inspire as much confidence as a doctor would in the operating room wearing a female body inspector T-shirt. Speaking of doctors, this week we found out that our top scientists thought COVID did, in fact, leak from a lab, but they were too worried that further debate would harm science in China. Yeah, because the last thing we want to do is bring a halt to those lab experiments they're doing on caged poodles and Uyghurs. This, according to recently surfaced emails in which one expert admits from nearly a year ago that a likely explanation was that COVID had rapidly evolved in a low security lab yeah, a low security lab. You know, maybe it's me, but that sounds like the worst kind of lab. <laughs> At least for messing around with deadly viruses. Cat follows better safety protocols when she makes meth in her garage. The email to Fauci and Dr. Francis Collins of the NIH suggests a virus was primed for rapid transmission between humans. That's a pretty big whoops even bigger than the daily one in Biden's slacks. <laughs> so what did the experts do? Did they leap into action to get the truth out? Fat chance, my Friday friends. They fretted that even debating gain-of-function research would do unnecessary harm to science in general and science in China in particular. Francis Collins warned it could damage international harmony. That's right. They kept it quiet not to protect you, but to protect the feelings of the brutal lying dictatorship that's as sensitive as a chubby kid on TikTok. Speaking of harmony, <laughs> what was Collins, the former head of the NIH, doing rather than telling us the truth? This. Somewhere past the pandemic, when we're free, there's a if I remember, full of activity. You know, I'm looking at the signer over there, and I'm thinking, you know, this is a time when I envy the deaf. <laughs> <laughs> I think my ears are going to charge me with murder. So, yeah, Nero fiddled while Rome burned, and while a pandemic raged, Francis played his guitar like an <laughs> camp counselor, ruining your s'mores. So the emails reveal that scientists were less interested in science than politics and felt it was better to hide the origins of a deadly virus than be open with those of us who were about to die. Now, there were people like us who knew the virus likely came from that lab, 
Some were scientists and they were roundly mocked. Some were called racist. Yet privately, the mocking experts agreed with them. And yet they left the people who said this publicly hung out to dry just to protect their own asses and their own grants. They said we were nuts in tinfoil hats that told us to wear masks in our cars, empty parks and swimming pools. It raises the point just how sane were the scientists in the first place. They created a deadly virus thinking they could then reverse engineer a vaccine in the name of science. Well, why not just not create the virus? Then you don't need to reverse engineer the vaccine. They've already made vaccines to fight natural viruses, so we really didn't need to invent new, deadlier, creepier ones. But hey, where's the fun in that if you want to play God and keep sucking at the government teat? Which leads to the bigger question, accountability. I'm not saying that this man-made virus was leaked on purpose. I'm pretty sure no one really wanted to kill more than 10 million people. But in this arrogant, murky universe, experts knew there's a risk you could leak a deadly man-made virus, but they deemed the risk acceptable. And when it happened, they blamed it on the wet market, which is pretty much a gross version of Trader Joe's. <laughs> While just down the road, researchers were bumbling around like a bunch of nutty professors. How convenient. The pandemic had nothing to do with the scientists. Say the scientists. And so Republicans had to force their hand to grant access to the documents after these scientific institutions repeatedly resisted efforts to come clean. And these emails show that scientists were already trying to silence any debate, claiming it would distract top researchers from their active duties. Yeah, the way a nuclear weapon heading towards New York would distract people from going to work. So don't tell them. Collins worried that the voices of conspiracy will quickly dominate, perhaps because in that case, those voices were right. And Collins' awful singing can't drown them out anymore. So they covered up the truth, and now we're all covering our faces. They knew the lab leak was realer than they let on, and now we're left with millions of dead. Call it manslaughter. But the crime was in the gamble. They decided to roll the dice. It was an accidental release, but born from a risk that they happily accepted, like a drunk driver getting into his car. Sure, someone might get killed, but it probably ain't going to be me. They put their reputations above human lives. To them, you weren't much more than the contents of a Petri dish. So what's the punishment for that? Hell, even in the most liberal crap hole of a city, they'd make you post bail. Period. Let's welcome tonight's guest. His politics say conservative, but his beard says daddy. Outspoken editor-in-chief <laughs> and contributing editor at The Spectator, Chadwick Moore. <laughs> If she hears one more Southern stereotype, she'll slap you with her possum. <laughs> Fox business anchor Dagan McDowell. Democrats say his comedy is worse than January 6th. Founder of the Loftus.party.com, Michael Loftus. And she's proof blondes have more fun, if by fun you mean priors. Fox News contributor, <laughs> Cat Tip. Yes. So, Michael, what is worse than your wardrobe? The contact of our so-called experts or our politicians? All of the above. Thank Can't you. Can't they all be equal, yes, Greg? Yes, they can. Uh, this, I find this whole thing uh, deeply disturbing. Mm -hmm. Seriously, they're worried about, oh, this might affect uh, yeah. science in China. Yes. I'm going to invite them to go to any college campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, science in China is going to be just fine. Yes, they're not going to. They're not going to really take a big hit. But here's the thing that I really want to uh, get into. It's like uh, our options were our what uh, accidental leak mm -hmm. and bat soup. I'm all for that uh, <laughs> that third rail. That whole hey, let's do this on purpose. Right. Like they keep dialing up these different viruses. This one just seemed too perfect. It's like this one kills redheads. This one kills blondes. Ooh, would you like something in a uh, kills fat diabetics. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Could you get that out right before the election? Well, that, I mean, that, that is the premise, though, was that, you know what, this is an actually, you know, a really valuable exercise. We create the killer so we can figure out how to stop the killer. But the problem is they, they created the killer and the killer got loose. It almost sounds like a movie, Dagan. You know what? Otherwise. If people watched more movies about <laughs> in the 80s, mm -hmm. then we would, this would never have happened. <laughs> and let me explain. What happened to our healthy 
fear of communism. Yes. And communist countries wanting to wipe the United States off of the face of the earth, take away our luscious freedoms. Like, my parents raised me to be, well, fear the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. They had nukes. They hated America. I watched Rocky and Bullwinkle. Boris and Natasha taught me really, you know, moss kill moose and squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Rare moose and squirrel. And then 1984, best movie maybe ever, Red Dawn. Mm -hmm. Of course, C. Thomas Howell gave me the tingles. Yes. So that's why I wore out the VHS tape. But again, <laughs> what I don't know what you mean. The Soviet Union was evil, but it wasn't just the Soviet Union. I'm not talking McCarthyism, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the Red Scare, like um, hunting people down, but. We would never, like, don't these old coots, Gordon Lightfoot and Tony Fauci, don't they realize that this communist government, why would you give them money if you knew that they were going to uh, do experiments in a lab that wasn't safe, which we knew about yeah. years ago? a low ago. level lab. I mean, right. at, at least make it a high level lab. <laughs> How hard is that? They <laughs> want to destroy the United States. And if they had, you know, my knowledge from, say, T Patrick Swayze movies, yeah. it, th this would never have happened. Low level, I mean, <laughs> just put that little weather strip in the windows. It's like, it's at 70 bucks. And is this the only lab in China that doesn't have security cameras? Yeah, know, it, it, like, we don't know what happened. It, um, that's what I'm so this is, the, this is the question, Chadwick, that I haven't heard asked. Okay, so I'm not talking about premeditated murder. Uh -huh. I'm talking about negligence. Nobody wanted, the, the Fauci and all that, they didn't want to kill a bunch of people. They thought, they thought in their heads that they were saving future lives, right? So they were doing God's work, so to speak. You know, they were like, they were saving millions yeah. by creating ways to, but instead, 10 million less. They did it in a careless lab, in a careless way. What kind of accountability is there? Is there, I'm putting this out, I mean, is there like death penalty for the, the you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. I, I'm not, it's not for me to say, because, you something's know. Something's got to happen. Something's got to happen. But you I don't even know, who, I don't even know who you arrest. And that's another question we'll get to. But, like, who, who do you charge? I mean, well, you know, we know what the penalty for treason is in this country. Yes. And it's supposed to be, but I won't say that on television. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. What's the next logical thing to happen would be an international treaty against gain-of-function research of yes. this type. But nobody's even talking about that. It doesn't seem like that's even on the table because yes. science is winning. You know, yeah, we have yeah, to keep yeah. the research going. I was most surprised to learn about this international harmony that we apparently have as a species. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's just been, a, you know, it's so fragile. We've had it for so long. I guess the next time there's a, a genocide occurring, what do we do to make sure that doesn't disrupt the international harmony? Just yeah. have, have a jam sesh but, yeah, with that's the nation? True. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think this calls for a drum circle. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's the attitude people in, like, abusive relationships have like I know I'm being horribly mistreated but I wouldn't want to disrupt the harmony and then like the <laughs> massive gaslighting that yeah. all of us were subjected to like if anybody for a while dared to say hey this virus that broke up and this broke out in the same neighborhood as this lab full of viruses maybe came from the lab full of viruses they were like you're insane you are so crazy that your crazy is dangerous and I banish <laughs> you from the online like yeah. I, gas Gaslighting. It's yeah, crazy. It was, it was so funny because I don't know if it was here on the five. I said, what are the odds? This has got to be yeah. almost two years ago. What, what are the odds that it broke out where the lab was? <laughs> yeah. like, what are the odds of that? Of and, and like people like that would get picked up and they would call me crazy. And, they call, and also, if you just mentioned the name China, a, a link to the lab, then you were racist. But you could say this was always weird about this whole thing that made me think it was a cover up. If you said the Chinese lab, that was racist. But if you said the Wuhan market, which was a Chinese market, that wasn't racist. When in fact, <laughs> when in fact, that's actually more racist because you're attributing it to a cultural practice. Yeah. And it really is yeah. a farmer's market. The reason why it's wet is because they hose down the ground after they chop up the meat. And most of it is stuff that you eat. There's a few exotic animals here and there, and they're not that good. <laughs> Take it from me. Uh, but like, anyway. I like to get the water after yes. when they hose it down. That's when it's good. Uh, Everything's yeah. all mixed together. Yeah, Wuhan a jumble. <laughs> yes. You know what the thing is, though? Here's the other reason why a lot of people didn't want to blame China. And I, th I again, I must have said this two years ago. I don't know when. It can't be two years ago. Let's say 18 months ago. It's not just about them because we sponsor it. So we can't say, we can't say, ah, it's evil China. We're there. So that means if you were to do a lawsuit, you couldn't just sue China. You'd have to sue the United States. You'd have to, because it was sponsored, there's sponsorships in the U.S. Fauci, like, you know, oversaw this, you know, the, the research funding. Right. We like that. We like that lab. So it's going to be on. Uh, we went. I think we went to that lab. Anyway, 
Read the book Viral by Matt Lit Ridley. We had him on here. He nailed this thing down. It's like insane. And it's just, I don't know what to do. It's crazy. Accountability. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.